Hi. No addition of microphone this week. Honestly, I cannot find it. I went to the office, I took it with me, I forgot it there or it's still with me, I don't know. Also, another addition to this week's Smackdown series. Uh, you, you can see my long hair. <laughs> Beautiful, gorgeous, fabulous. Friday Night Smackdown is here, he just, uh, I just watched it and he, uh, overall score, three branch. I don't know why I said the final score before uh, going through the whole show, but long story short, we had four tag team matches, a feud that I forgotten last week, and I'm gonna, of course, go through the contract signing. Also, Charlotte Flair versus uh, Sonya Deville. First tag team title match was Sheamus and Drew versus Viking Raiders. I have only one question: Why did Viking Raiders lost? Yeah, that's it. That that's my only question. I, I don't want to talk about it too much. I don't honestly. I don't know who is supposed to win the whole tournament. I feel like the winner of the whole tournament is supposed to be Drew and Sheamus. Which is like, I'm not sure about that, like, give other teams a little bit of a spotlight out there, but... Anyway, my question was there, if someone can answer me that, it would be amazing, because we're seeing a revamp of Viking Raiders for like, fourth or fifth time, and they lost. The second tag team match was Hitro versus... Los Lotarios. I spent like a minute thinking about who is the other team. Yes, I have the same question, why Los Lotarios lost. I don't know which is good or which is bad, but I feel like Hitro is not gonna win anyway, and Hitro is kind of in a bad position right now, and even if we give them that victory, we're not gonna bring them in a good position. But if we give a little bit of a hit to Los Lotarios, it's gonna be a good thing because we're gonna elevate them. Third match, Brawling Brutes versus Imperium. Oh, how can I say that? This is one of the matches that I skipped. I love Pete Dunne, I love Butch. This is probably one of my favorite wrestlers right now, but I really hate Imperium. Not hate, hate is a strong word. I just don't like watching Imperium. I was thinking off camera why is that, and I went to the conclusion that it's probably because Back in NXT, they were shoved in my face really hard. They were like three or four time NXT champs, even when MSK was a thing, which was bizarre, man. And, but I watched the finisher, I love the Pit Dunn selling. I love the Pit Dunn selling. Oh my god. Every time he just takes a bump, it feels like he's dead. Like, he just. <laughs> his body just goes. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I love it. Fourth match, Maximum Male Models versus Legado Fantasma. For some reason I forgot the winning team. It was it was nothing special, I was just really confused what are we doing with Maximum Male Models. As long as I know they even have a special YouTube series, uh, which is which is good for them, but uh, yeah, my, my top moment was... Oh. Oh. Mm -hmm. Looks like he's wearing boxes. <laughs> When I remember <laughs> the face of the, the guy, like, I, I know it's a little bit of a childish moment, but uh, I couldn't find anything better. Maybe Kevin Owens pop a powerbomb to Roman Reigns, but we're gonna talk about it later. Two feuds that I want to talk about before going to the main shtick. Charlotte Flair and Sonya Deville. I don't know where we're going there, but I have an advice for you. WWE, I know you're watching my videos. I know you, I know you love them. And I'm gonna give you advice. Make Sonya Deville more aggressive. Make her like... Seth Rollins in 2019 versus Brock Lesnar. Unstoppable, unbeatable, determined. Every week coming with the chair, with the kendo stick, with the crutch, whatever, beat the shit out of Charlotte Flair and make her demand that championship, shove that championship to her and blast her to the moon. I'm not a big Sonya Deville fan, but I feel like in the right hands and with the right tools, she can reach the next level, you know? She cannot reach Becky, Charlotte, Bailey uh, level yet, but she can reach the next level, you know what I mean? That's what we need. I don't know if you have heard shit from my clapping, but... And the second match is LA Knight versus Bray Wyatt. I forgot to talk about it last week, but I'm really excited to see Pitch Black match. 
It's gonna be a really like a cinematic match. This week we saw Firefly Funhouse. I'm really excited to see that Pitch Black match. I feel like we're gonna see all of Bray Wyatt's character come to life. But do you know what? Do you know what? Do you know what? I feel like LA Knight should pick the victory. Bray Wyatt can get a loss and we're gonna get elevate LA Knight a little bit and we're gonna extend their feud. I don't know how much Bray Wyatt has in store for his character work, but it's amazing, man. It's amazing. That guy is a genius. Last but not least, the saga. Sami Zayn, Tribal Chief, Kevin Owens, Bloodline. Oh my God, my mind is gonna explode. From a moment, I thought that we kicked Sami Zayn of the Bloodline. Because basically, Sami Zayn went to, into the office of uh, Roman Reigns and he was like, Roman, are we good? And he was like, uh, I feel like you have something to say. Sami Zayn started to say like, he wanted to get the job done last week, but the Usos came out and they stopped uh, that from doing anyway. And some words from Kevin Owens came into his mind anyway. And Roman flipped. He was like, get out of here. And I was like, Sammy's out of the bloodline. Oh my god, but he's so unceremonious. Anyway, later that night, Paul Heyman advised Roman to bring in, bring in Sammy into the bloodline again, because otherwise Kevin and Sammy will team up against the bloodline, which I don't see that happening necessarily, but... And the favorite moment from the whole saga was contract signing. We all know how the contract signing goes, like... First wrestler go, the second wrestler go, some yapping was happening and after that the table is flipped and they started fighting. I'm grateful in a way that Kevin Owens stopped that, he just went out, started slamming everyone in the bloodline. Great pop-up powerbomb to Roman. And he's not through yet! Owens oh. pop -up He almost started slapping Paul, of course he did because he's respectful. And Sami Zayn came out and he didn't do shit, which maybe we're gonna bring that next week. Anyway, not much of a development about the saga, but I suppose that next week nothing is gonna happen really to that whole shtick. We're gonna develop that storyline after the Rumble. Uh, but I feel like everything will culminate at one point with Sami Zayn versus uh, Roman. But I'm really curious how that whole shtick is gonna happen. Anyway guys, thank you so much for watching. If you like the series episode, my thoughts, your thoughts, your comments, my comments, you can like the video, you can post a comment down there to say what you enjoy, what you don't enjoy about the shtick that I'm talking about. I'm gonna see you in a few days for Raw. Monday Night Raw 30. Boom, baby. Baby, woo, woo, woo.